Dimitri, welcome. Hi, Mike. Glad to be here. Hi. So, Dmitry Nizhbetsky is an IT project manager uh, with a mission to help us all to become better project managers. Dmitry has a background in both traditional predictive project management and in agile project management. Uh, so, although we have a similar goal in life, uh, we both come from very different backgrounds. Uh, Dmitry's website is called Project Management Basics, and it is full of useful resources to help you to become a better project manager, all drawn from his own experience. And Dimitri is also a committed YouTuber, uh, producing a new video every week on top of his full-time job as a project manager. Because of his experience in planned predictive project management and agile project management and hybrids of those, um, I thought it would be ideal to speak with Dimitri today about his experience of how to select a project approach. So, Dimitri, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm really honored to be here. Well, let's get started with the most obvious uh, two questions. Firstly, what do we mean by selecting a project approach and why is it important that we do so? Okay, yeah. Let's start why it's important, because like we as project managers, uh, we have a responsibility to increase the project's chances for success. And we can apply any kind of tools, process, or techniques to do that. And most of the times, we don't want to invent a wheel for each unique project. We want to select something that is tested and already proven. And that's where we like it all boils down to selecting something that uh, other project managers in maybe other industries already tried and it worked for them. And we select this as our basis and try to improve it for our project. And this way we'll uh, have some baseline uh, predictable approach that we can use. And if we speak generally, what does it mean to select a project management approach? It means that you need to select processes, tools, and techniques, and combine them into one uh, working workflow uh, from the project initiation to project end. And like in this uh, context comes the uh, common term that we use, tailoring. We need to put all these processes and tools together. We need to ensure that data and information flows from one process into another, from one tool into another, and ideally it should go seamlessly. And the same way this information and data should uh, be spread uh, to stakeholders, team members, and other people who are involved in this project. And usually we have like uh, frameworks and methodologies from, to choose from. So we know some of them, they're like common, like Waterfall or Scrum or Kanban, something like that. These big names. Yeah. So at some point at the start of the project, you need to select one. Yeah. I mean, it always, it always seems to me odd that a lot of project managers will repeat what we always say, which is a project are unique. They are different. And yet they will then go to the same toolkit and select exactly the same process, the same structures, the same tool set for every project they do. And, and I think this, I, I like the word tailoring that you use. I know it's one that PMI uses as well. Um, it is about choosing the, the set of tools and methodologies and processes that fit the project really well. So, you know, we know, we know that, you know, agile, predictive or waterfall as some people would like to call it and hybrid are the um, are the three main kind of approaches can you give us a, a little bit of a, an insight into what we mean by each of those because they are the core kind of components that we're choosing from aren't they yeah so generally if we don't go into a rabbit hole of categorization of all these approaches they are free as you say like I, I differentiate like pure agile when there is only Scrum or Kanban or any other like agile approach and the whole project life cycle goes through it uh, without any other phases done in different way. 
Then we have plan-driven or predictive approach where you plan in advance everything and you get through these phases of the project. And then we have hybrid, and I think it's the most common one for uh, like for all project management in general. It's when you have a plan-driven approach and you do some phases of the project using different kinds of uh, frameworks or methodologies. For example, you do plan-driven for some phases and then you switch to Scrum and Kanban to execute the project. But there's one thing that I want to mention in this context, which lots of uh, project managers confuse and, and don't understand correctly, that you can't uh, consider a project management approach without considering the project life cycle. Yeah. Because they come hand in hand. And the main idea is that if you have a big project and it has several phases, big, big enough phases, you can do this project using different methodologies for each phase. Yes. So for example, uh, most of big software development projects, they like have an initiation where we have some random activities to create some uh, initial documentation, collect some information. Then we have proof of concepts or, or prototyping. And we use, for example, Kanban there because it's easy to adjust um, requirements and priorities. Then if it's a success, we do high level planning and we use all the uh, traditional like plan driven approaches to come up with the schedule, to come up with the cost of the project. Yes, we use like uh, mm, iterations as a unit of measurement for everything, but in general, we're doing the same planning. Execution goes in Scrum. And then before we get to release, we switch back to something plan driven because we need to manage uh, other departments, other people uh, in a predictable way. And we can't put them into Scrum team and do yeah. team interactions. So the idea is simple that uh, you need to uh, actually look at uh, selecting the project management approach for your whole life cycle. Yeah. And uh, like great example here is Prince2. It's uh, the project management approach that empathizes on breaking down the project into phases and doing yeah. them in a manageable way. Uh, on the other hand, we have Scrum, which says you don't need phases. You can do everything from start to finish using just this set of tools, techniques, uh, artifacts, and meetings. And you can do everything from start to end. Uh, but likewise, you can opt to do only one phase with Scrum. Mm. So like the main tip here, the main takeaway, never look at uh, selecting a project management approach as one uh, piece that you do at the start of the project for the whole project. Yeah. You need to consider the whole project life cycle. I think that, that's absolutely right. And it takes me back when I was actively managing projects, which is a few years ago now, before what we think of as Agile was around. The Agile manifesto hadn't come out but there were still uh, software developers using extreme programming, rapid application development, and techniques we would now see as agile. But we used to emphasize that there was a stage between defining your project and planning it called strategy. And it was about thinking, what is the strategy for getting this project from you know, an idea to a delivered set of products and, and deliverables? And that was all about exactly what you described. It was about thinking about what are the stages we need and how are we going to conduct each stage? And although agile practitioners or some agile practitioners like to think they've invented iteration and uh, an incremental uh, delivery, they didn't. You know, I'm fairly sure that each pyramid at Giza uh, was built in a slightly different way. That's just iteration. And, and they were, you know, so we've been using this for a long time this is not new stuff and i think my message to project managers like me who kind of grew up very much in a, a predictive tradition is that there is nothing scary about agile and likewise my message to agile practitioners who have learned scrum and think that that is all there is is that actually that will not suit every type of project and if you want to move beyond projects which are well suited to scrum and do other interesting things as well then 
don't be afraid to wrap what you've learned in a more predictive wrapper or to provide prediction and predictive project management techniques within the context of Scrum. It all works together very well. And I think that's why project managers like you are probably the ones who are getting the most interesting kind of gigs because you're able to, to see how to, to put both together. So I suppose that the next question to ask is, you know, if I know a number of different agile techniques and if I know a number of different predictive techniques can i just choose any project management approach i want are there constraints uh, yeah that's uh, one of the biggest myths and biggest fears of new project managers that they are they need to select a project management approach right at the start of the project and it will be a cornerstone decision that will make or break the project and the reality is different because each industry has its best practices and it's like it will influence your options the most. For mm-hmm. example, if uh, you all come to software development industry and say, hey, I don't know Scrum, we'll do it waterfall. Most likely we'll say, no, 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 thank you. <laughs> we'll, we'll find another project manager. Uh, so each industry will have their uh, set of uh, project management approaches. And usually it's one to maybe three that you can choose from. Uh, second, there is like organizational assets and environment where you work because there will be established policies, specific experience, tools that they already have. And it's a critical consideration because you don't want, again, invent a wheel or introduce something new uh, to the company because it's risks for the project's outcome. Oh, for example, let's imagine you work in... Uh, company that produces kitchen furniture yeah Mm -hmm. and at some point your leadership decided oh we need a software application for our products to promote them and so on let's do a project at this moment you may consider like the environmental factors of your organization do you have experience in software development do you have infrastructure to do it do you have people to actually code the application and so on and In this case, uh, it's even not about selecting the project management approach as is, because if you don't consider your environment, you most likely fail because Mm. like the best solution here is to hire another company which has uh, expertise in doing uh, this kind of project and they will know how to select the appropriate project management approach. Mm. And like also another tip for all project managers, especially new ones in like choosing the project management approach. You need to understand that it's not your responsibility to introduce new project management approaches to the company or to the clients. We're not in the business of organizational change management in general, unless Mm -hmm. it's your project. So you shouldn't be wasting resources on introducing something new. You should take what already works and try to improve it, try to get the same type of results. So answering your questions, no, you can't select any uh, project management approach that you know of, like any framework. Most likely you will be constrained to selecting one of them. And uh, you will usually opt to selecting one that you are most experienced with. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's it's like any element of culture. You've, you've talked in terms of organizational culture, but if if any of us went to a very different culture and tried to do things the way that we do them, then there will be a clash and it will not be efficient. And it might be that what I'm trying to do is perfectly suited in the culture I come from, and therefore it's a good choice objectively. But if you try to force something upon a culture that isn't ready for it, then you will get that clash. And part of our job as project managers is to find the easiest way to do something that still has the right integrity in terms of quality and, uh, and, and meeting budgets and all of that. So if, if we can't just choose what we want, are there, are there some, that, some methodologies that are better than others, uh, even if they're only better than others in certain contexts? How would you kind of weigh up some of the main kind of approaches that you've got experience of okay so 
that's also one of the uh, myths and misconceptions that uh, different providers of education and different organizations try to <laughs> impose on us. So that some uh, methodology or framework is better than the other and it's a silver bullet for any project and so on. In fact, it's not the case. Each framework, each uh, methodology, each approach has its main use case. Yeah. And you should know what's the best uh, like case for selecting this or other approach. So, for example, uh, we know all about Scrum. And if you read very carefully what Scrum guides describe, you'll see that there are a lot of prerequisites for this kind of framework. Mm -hmm. And the biggest one, as I see it, you need a dedicated product owner. In real life, it's very difficult to find <laughs> a person who has the total authority over the product. And this person also can control budget and schedule. And this person is also a great leader to manage all external stakeholders to come up with just one direction for the product. It's and that's, like, that, that kind of brings to mind, I, I have a, a short video called What is Scrum? And someone commented on it, why does the world not acknowledge properly the, uh, the founders of, of Scrum? And my answer to him was actually the world that knows the origin, which is actually in product management. Uh, acknowledges it, but project managers are not interested in that kind of history because it's outside of their domain. But the origins of Scrum are in product management, where there was a very clear product owner or product manager. And, and I think that insight that you've just given is golden to me because it links together something I knew, which was the origins of Scrum and something you're saying as a practitioner, which is if you don't have that single point product ownership, Scrum isn't going to work in the way it was intended. I'm sure there are, are fixes you can apply, but it's not. It was it was built for a single point product only. Yeah, and like if you dig deeper into practical implementation, especially Scrum for software development, you'll come up that there are a lot of technical challenges to implement Scrum. You need like continuous integration, continuous deployment, and everything set up so that you can do these increments every two weeks, and they they are tested, you need automatic testing, you it, and so on. So every, every project management approach has its prerequisites and the best use case. Mm. And there is no shortcut to knowing all of them. Like I can list them, but on practice, you will face a lot of uh, underwater rocks and problems that no one speaks about. Yeah. So the best way is just to... Um, approach all these uh, um, frameworks, not from marketing perspective as uh, the owners of these frameworks or education providers position them, but see it from perspective of pure project management. Do yeah. we have risk management? Do we have stakeholders? Do we integrate it all together as one? How is communication going? What roles and responsibilities are there? And so on. So, yeah. It's all, about, it's all about the fundamental principles. If you understand the principles and how they apply to the, the situation you're in, context is king. If you know the context and you know the principles, you, you can choose from. Yeah. But it does, what that does tell me is that you know, today's, tomorrow's project managers are going to have to be fluent in the languages of many different methodologies because if you've only got a hammer in your toolbox, then everything starts to look a bit like a nail. And if you've got a range of tools, you can select intelligently, especially if, you, if you've learned how to use them. So I think the, the last kind of big question I've got is bringing everything that you told us together. Is there a, if you like, a logical process for evaluating what management approach, what project management approach you should use in, in, a, in the project you're faced with today? So... How do I select such a project management approach? Mm. What will I consider? So I have a simple, actually, like four-step process. Okay. And first of all, whenever I come to a new company, I review its organizational assets and how its environment is set up. Mm -hmm. What experience do they have? And usually each organization uh, does 
similar projects. They don't do everything at once in different domains, in different industries. They do yeah. similar projects, somewhat different products or services. So that's the first point. I don't want to introduce uh, something new. I want to start with what they have and build on that. I want, I will maybe improve it later. Mm -hmm. So if the company doesn't have anything um, and they don't know how to do this project, I would analyze the best practices of industry. So again, if we talk about software development, it's usually Scrum, Kanban or something in the mix. If it's construction, it's plan driven. If it's something like more exotic <laughs> industry, yeah. I will still search the internet or consult with other project managers uh, what they use. Third is to analyze uh, project lifecycle. Do I need a mix of uh, frameworks or can I do it with just one? Mm -hmm. Can I apply, for example, Prince 2 and get project from start to end? Should I apply Scrum somewhere in between? And you can understand it only if you know what uh, different phases are there in the project. What, uh, what work different in nature do you have? Do you have testing? Do you have requirements? Do you have designs? And so on. So analyzing project lifecycle is critical. And then based on all the information that you get, you need to assess two things generally. If you have a big and complex project, you should always go for a hybrid uh, project management approach. You do most of the part, most of the part as a plan-driven project, where you plan phases and then you select a framework for each of these phases. And if you have smaller projects where where you don't uh, differentiate these phases so much, mm. you need to assess whether you can involve your stakeholders on a daily basis. If you can involve your stakeholders on a daily basis with your team and get them communicating with them like for a few hours a day, but each day regular. If yes, we usually opt for uh, agile framework like Scrum yeah. or Kanban because uh, that will in general make clients more happy because they will be involved and engaged in the project. They will see progress. They will test the product or service that you're developing. So then they will be more happy. And second consideration is the requirement, their source and the amount of ambiguity. If you uh, can get uh, like the vision or the general uh, idea of the product and then you are the subject matter expert, you can collect the requirements from specification, documentation, or you can come up with it on your own, then it's more likely that uh, it, it will be more efficient to do a plan-driven approach. Yeah. Because you can collect the requirements and then uh, planning, leveling resources, uh, calculating costs is much easier than doing it in Scrum. Yeah. So, but if you don't have, uh, if you need stakeholders to provide your requirements, you can go this way. So you need their daily involvement, so they give you piece by piece uh, the requirements. It's usually the case when your clients and sponsors are the subject matter experts. They know the industry and they have insights, and you are just the execution. You you know how to implement it technically. Yeah. In this case, again, you go for agile approach. Mm. So. Yeah. Generally, these are the considerations. Yeah, I think the other the other one I throw in from my experience is is about the kind of company culture in terms of the balance it it draws on the spectrum from high levels of kind of accountability, rigor, governance, mm -hmm. through to you know an, an an emphasis on speed and being prepared to take compromises on there because obviously the more governance the organisation wants, the less comfortable it's going to be with a pure agile approach and the more you're going to need to wrap around a, uh, a predictive environment that allows the organization to be comfortable with its, you know, with the decisions that it's making and the pace of decision making. Um, and, and I think that's something a lot of agile practitioners neglect is they, they see the pure agile approach uh, in terms of how well it will deliver the product 
but forget the needs of the senior people in the organization who, who feel a, a burden of accountability. So we have to be mindful of that. But I like that. I like the way you've broken it down into those four phases of understanding the organization and what it's got and what it's good at, understanding the industry, um, then thinking about the life cycle and then making your choice based on all of that and understanding how it fits. So that that's a nice way to end that simple four step process. So Thank you. Is there anything that we've we've not talked about, we've not covered that you would add or any tips that you would give uh, to to round off your uh, your thoughts? OK, the final tip that I can give anyone is something that you mentioned, but I want to stress this out. So rather than trying to uh, learn every possible framework or approach, get all the certifications. The project manager needs to understand the basic concepts of project management and leadership. Mm. Why does project management work at all? Why it's efficient? Yeah. Not, not because uh, like it's a specific approach or framework. It's because like project management is all about actually leadership and communication between interaction between people. Yeah. So in the center, we always have people. And no matter what uh, approach you will choose, if you don't understand how to work with people, how to organize their work and motivate them to do this, nothing will help. Mm. You can do it without any framework, just using your you know, gut feeling to organize the work and still you'll like manage your project successfully if you're a good leader. Don't focus too much on frameworks. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right because it is. People do think of project management as being very much about a technical specialism, but I'm I know, and I'm sure you know, many project managers who aren't good at diagrams. They're not good at plans. They're not good at, but they are very good with people, and and there are others who their emphasis is on telling people what to do because they've got a plan or they've got a process and they know what's next. And by and large, it's the people who can communicate well who, who thrive best. It's not enough to know the methodologies. This is a nice way to end up. Uh, Dimitri, people will have enjoyed your comments and learned a lot from them. How can they get in touch with you? How can they find out more about what you do and what you offer to the project management community? Okay, so in general, I help all project managers to master like project management professional profession and become better leader by providing them the practical tips and knowledge of how to manage projects in the real world. Like mm -hmm. that's the general idea. And I have, I have a course on that that teaches everything that a project manager needs. Uh, but Generally, I want to um, like provide people more value. And I think Mike will include some links in the description to my site and some articles that may interest uh, people in regards to the topic that we discuss about frameworks, about project management concepts, and so on. So what I would like to know, if you want to uh, learn more a bit from me, just check the description below and you'll find value there. Okay, great. And I'll put on screen the uh, link as well to your website and to your YouTube channel because uh, you do some fantastic videos. I, I often watch your videos and think there's a huge wealth of content. I can't remember how long you've been going, but you've been building your channel up. And uh, so for every kind of topic that someone might be interested in, there's a good chance that you've given your perspective on it and how to do it uh, in a very practical way. So do take a look at Dimitri's uh youtube channel as well dimitri it has been an absolute delight to uh, speak with you and you've got some great information there that i think anyone could put into practice so thank you very much for your thoughts and for joining me on this show thank you mike it was a great experience i'm really glad i got here and i'm looking forward to see this live <laughs> great thanks a lot dimitri thank bye. You. bye mike Please do give us a thumbs up if you like this video. I'll be creating loads more great project management content. So please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of it. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.